for another installment of our road trip around the Malaysian Peninsula. Today I'm going to tell you a story about a murder of James Birch. In fact, I'm going to tell you that story right here on the very spot that he was murdered. Now, remember in Taiping there was all this trouble with the Gihing and the Heisan? Well, that encouraged the English to intervene as it was playing havoc with their investments. And Sultan Ismail was seen as not very cooperative, so they decided a more compliant alternative was Sultan Abdullah, who would fit their purposes. Abdullah was charming, dressed well, liked the ladies, and obviously wouldn't interfere with British plans so long as they paid him well. So thought the man appointed as resident, James Birch. He was an experienced colonial administrator, but he'd grown impatient with people who failed to see the benefits of modernization. He said, nothing but decision is necessary with these people, and with Abdullah, one must be firm and even peremptory. Ismail refused to roll over and the other chiefs refused to support Abdullah and give up their rights to collect taxes to the British. Birch said, it concerns as little what the old customs of the country were, nor do I think they are worthy of consideration. Abdullah senses trouble and comes to a deal with Ismail. He can be Sultan if they just get rid of Birch, who is impossible. Abdullah sends Birch off to Penang to pick up a suit he ordered from Savile Row. And while he's away, he meets with the other chiefs to discuss the deal he'd made with Ismail. Plus, he divvied out the opium concessions to them. Maharaja Leila offers to stab Birch. But Abdullah decides it best to consult a lawyer in Penang on how to impeach a British resident. But there are bad omens. During an opium fueled meeting with a local shaman, a butterfly was identified as Birch and it was killed. Everyone now prepares for a violent confrontation. Birch is now wary of resistance to British policy and so decides to make an example of Maharaja Leila and destroy his toll house. He arrives on his steamboat at Leila's house, sends his men to post proclamations closing down the administration and heads off for a shower, which is a bad move. A local Malay spears him in the shower and others then hack him with swords and throw him in the river. And then Maharaja Leila attacks the Indian sepoys, killing them. And here's where he took his last shower. Abdullah claims he knew nothing of the plot and then he hangs the man who slashed Birch with a sword. Or at least he says that this is the man. Despite that, the Brits burn down Leila's house and eventually capture him. They try him and others at Nga Ibrahim's house in Taiping, where the whole conspiracy comes out. Maharaja Leila finds himself hanged alongside the Lower Downs, thus demonstrating that all are equal before British justice. Well, more or less, because Sultan Abdullah merely gets packed off to the Seychelles, where he joins the Victoria Cricket Club. Prak is now in such a state of uproar that the replacement resident resigns after a month and Hulo takes over, restoring order by essentially allowing the chiefs to have a fat share of the government revenues. Of course, during the colonial era, Raja Leila was portrayed as something of a troublemaker, but it was acknowledged that Birch lacked charm in his dealings with the Malays. Nowadays, the Maharaja and his associates are national heroes who resisted colonial oppression. Raja Leila is buried here. Birch's resting place is similarly unsung deep inside an oil plantation. History, it seems, is just one thing after another. So please subscribe to this channel so that you can see what happens next at facebook.com slash Lawrence and Helen.